Ruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Let me welcome you to our house. Again, the new normal. And uh, again, there'll be another class after this class on uh, the Seder of Balak, which we are in the middle of. Um, last five classes that I've given have been on the uh, coronavirus, and I'm sure that everything in one form or another will also connect, I'm sure. Um, however, I think it's time to get back to some kind of normal. And by that, I mean that uh, we should deal with some other topics as well. So um, this week, I decided to deal with uh, paper clips. And I said that to my wife that uh, I was going to give a, a uh, talk, a discussion on paper clips. And her rep reply to me was, what can you say about paper clips? And it kind of made me laugh because it reminded me of a story when I was uh, in high school. I took a class, a class in public speaking. And one of our projects was a demonstration speech. Uh, I, I brought my guitar in and talked about how to play a guitar. Well, there was one, one of my friends in class, uh, he had a heavy beard, uh, hadn't shaved the day before. And when he came into the class, this speech class, came in with a bucket of water, a towel, some shaving cream, and a razor. And he proceeded to wash his face, and then he put the shaving cream on. And we watched him, and then he proceeded to uh, shave himself. He didn't say a word. And when he finished shaving, he wiped his face and went and sat down. And the teacher looked at him and said, uh, you didn't say a word. He says, what can you say about shaving? <laughs> so it's kind of what my wife said. What do you say about paper clips? And my thought is, Really, quite a bit. So let's look. What's paper clips? So the question really one would ask is, how do we assess the value of anything? Do we judge it by how much it cost, by the difficulty that it took to obtain the object, or by its availability, by its size, or by its weight? Well, I think we judge an item by the function that it produces in our lives. That function can change, so that the importance of the item can also change. For example, a boat is great as long as there's water. If you are landlocked, there's little you can do with the boat. It really just takes up space. Paper clips are relatively cheap. They cost less than a half of a penny each, and they seem to be useful, but are limited in their application. There are not many people, I'm sure, that are excited when they see a paper clip, nor would most people bend, bother to bend down to pick one up if they saw one laying on the ground. Personally, I am an exception to that statement. To me, a paperclip is an important product. They function as an instrument that binds, and religiously, we know that anything that binds, aktut, unity, we see as something that is good. They also see themselves as small and irrelevant, a concept in Judaism that we call bittel, self-nullification. Again, something that God admires greatly. So why am I so enamored with paper clips? It really began with the Shabbat, with the day of the seventh day of the week, especially during the long summer Shabbosos, when Shabbos would end late. Then I would have a lot of time that I could use to study some Torah. Now, when I learn, I try to write down things that I want to retain, or at least highlight them. However, on the Shabbat, we cannot write, nor can we use a magic marker. So I would learn something that I thought was great, and I would try to remember it. But then I would continue to learn, and I would find something else that I found very interesting. So it wound up being much like trying to hold a dozen eggs in your hand at one time. The end result being that you wind up breaking the whole dozen. So I just lost my interest in learning on the Shabbat. But then I discovered paper clips, and that, that changed everything. When I would learn something that was special and that I wanted to remember, all I would do is just mark it with a paper clip. And after the Shabbat, then I would be able to transfer it to my notes. I also found that even if I didn't transfer the information, the paper clip remained in place. And when I would open the book at some other time, I would easily be able to turn to those places of interest that I had marked before so that I wouldn't have to reread the whole book again. 
I also found that paper clips come in different colors. Kind of cute. So I learned to color code. See, I'm a storyteller. And so I search for stories in many different books. I try to mark those stories on different holidays in different colors so that I can easily identify stories that pertain to that specific holiday without having to reread all the stories in the book again. So my use of paper clips expanded and I found myself using paper clips not just on the Shabbat or Yom Tov in the Jewish holidays, but also during the week. In fact, I always try to keep a few paper clips in my pocket at all times. You never know when you might read something special and you might want to remember it. By using this method, one would not even have to open a book to find an article or story that would be applicable to a certain occasion or time of the year. The paper clip sticking out from the top of the pages tells me what it is I need to know about the contents of the article that I marked and for which holiday it was for. But in the end, Paper clips are insignificant to most people. It is nothing more than a piece of metal whose value is based on its ability to bind papers together. Anyone who has heard, though, about the story, about the article of the paper clip project, or one clip at a time, as it was called also, has certainly changed their perspective on the seemingly insignificant clasp. So, story goes like this. Again, something amazing happened. In the small town of Whitwell, a tiny rural community of 2,000 residents in the mountains of Tennessee, in the Bible Belt. In 1998, the principal of Whitwell's middle school asked his fifth grade class language and arts teacher, together with the assistant principal, to institute a Holocaust education class to teach their students about tolerance and diversity. These were not Jewish students. They were white Christian children who were struggling with the concept and enormity of the killing of six million, million Jews. And the only offense that these Jews committed was being Jewish. This meant that they were different. Hitler, Yamach Shemo, and his fellow anti-Semites throughout the world, both active and indifferent, could not tolerate this diversity. And so they all agreed on genocide to destroy all of the Jewish people, wherever they were. Now, some of these people were proactive, while others just stood by and watched. Amazingly, even in the United States, during World War II, 50% of the American public thought that the Jews were getting what they deserved. How do you reach such a foreign idea to sheltered young Christian children living in the mountains of Tennessee. So the students reached, researched, taught them that in Norway, whose citizens are predominantly Christian, they chose to wear paper clips on their beings as a symbol of resistance against the Nazi occupation during World War II. Now the Jews were relegated to wearing yellow patches with a Jewish star emblazoned on it. The Norwegians showed their solidarity with their Jewish countrymen by wearing paper clips. Even the king did the same. It wasn't much, but it was a heroic act of defiance against the prevailing anti-Semitism that conveyed a message. The message was, we care. Now the students of Whitwell decided to collect six million paper clips. The idea gathered momentum and before long drew international media attention. Letters of support poured in from all over the world. They augmented the project, adding another 5 million clips for a total of 11 million paper clips, coinciding with the, all the people who were killed as a result of Hitler's diabolical plan. In 2001, the school dedicated a children's Holocaust memorial, which includes an authentic German railroad car used to transport the Jews to their final destination in the concentration camps. They filled it with a portion of the more than 30 million paper clips that the children had collected over a period of 10 years. 
So now we can see how even little things, things that seem to be so small and insignificant, can help us to live and to grow. They can even be a conduit to our past and a vehicle to help us to continue to grow in our future. I am a child of parents who survived the Holocaust. But many of my relatives, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins were not so lucky. After reading about the students in Whitwell, Tennessee, and their connection to the Holocaust through paper clips, I now find some comfort and connection when I place another paper clip on a page of a holy book that I am studying. I feel a connection as I attach each paper clip. It somehow represents a relative that I was never able to meet, names that have no faces, and faces that I will never see. They were amongst the six million martyrs that perished in the Holocaust. Not because of anything they did or something that they said. Their only sin was that they had the misfortune to be born to Jewish parents. Maybe there's still hope in this world. When we see young, middle school, non-Jewish children in the heart of the Bible Belt, and that they can create something so simple and profound as a memorial to those strangers who practiced a different religion, who spoke a different language, people who they never met. Yet, they found a way to ensure that their memory will never be forgotten, even if it's only through the use of an insignificant paperclip. Now, you know, maybe the next time you look at a paperclip, you too will remember those in whose footsteps we walk. May God bless us that the people of the world should come together in peace, especially today, even if it's through a small and insignificant thing as a paperclip. And with that, may we be able to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sikainu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much, and hopefully you'll look at a paperclip differently the next time you see one. We'd now like to continue 